people ask me if we can do a neck setting video for them for a mortise and tenon or a bolt on neck. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, this guitar was brought to me by my video man, Glenn LaSalle. He built it. And using the information in our number three bending video, he had set the geometry up for the side for a one and a half degree neck angle. Now you can verify that his neck angle is nice. Right back here where the bridge is going to go, he's just about one eighth off the top. So he has a very good line on his body. So now he needs to make the neck fit. So he has the purpling channel cut. He doesn't have the binding in yet. Uh, that doesn't really matter one way or the other. We do have the neck here. And the neck has a two-way truss rod in it, and it's installed. Uh, this was a Henley Moon neck. It fits into the neck block. And I'm checking to make sure that there is some gap here between the bottom of the mortise and the tenon. And as you can see, we're going to have to remove some material in order to get this to come down through the top. Uh, this is absolutely normal, so this is nothing to be afraid of, and it's nothing wrong. So we're going to open this up so that we can get to part two of setting the neck. Uh, different neck manufacturers and different truss rods would probably mean you have to do different things. So in order to clear the top for the truss rod, totally normal. So now, how you do it doesn't really matter. You can use a jig like this. You can sit here with a chisel, whatever makes you happy. Do a test fit. Piece of cake. Now, at this point, we need to see how are we for center, how is the actual neck lined up. Now, the one nice thing about this is this is a typical beginner's mistake. When you look at the neck, the neck does not want to bottom out. It's actually captured at the bottom of the block. Perfectly normal. It's not the first time I've seen this happen. So you can say, what are we going to do? Well, we can do two things. We can make the, we can make the mortise, or we can change the tenon. In this case, we need to go down about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to take my little jig there, and I'm just going to drop this down the eighth of an inch, and that's going to take care of the problem. Uh, really is nothing to get too worried about. But when you want to do, when you get a neck, a mortise and tenon neck, you actually want to take a look at this before you glue the neck block in. And I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. Now, admittedly, I freehand this. A lot of people might make some people nervous, but I've done this before. So now, as you can see, I've got the slot down, and I'm actually may have to drop this a little, little bit more. Nope. Now, what I have to do is I drop down far enough. What's holding me up now is the truss rod. So I have to drop the truss rod slot here just a little bit and that should help here. So these are the little nuisance things that you will have to uh, take care of as you're changing, as you're doing your next set. And this is stuff that you could check before you start a building.
Okay. Now, we should actually have a little bit of adjustment room here now. And there. Just about perfect. You can see. Let me see. I have a little straight edge here. And you can see that we now dropped it. So we're good. So, how do the holes line up for the screws? We'll find out in a minute. Okay, well we're going to have to elongate the hole there. And you can see I'm looking at maybe about a sixteenth. I'm just eyeballing it. So we know we got to get the bottom one relieved, and now I can check the upper one. And I do like this configuration with the two, using the two bolts. It, it's a much better configuration. And here you can see it's almost there, so you just got to tweak the top one and take a good bit off of the bottom one. And again, I can use this contraption. However, now I'm going to have to do this freehand. And this is where you can get a little, this can be a little bit scary, but don't fear, just take little nibbles, you'll be okay. Don't try to take the whole cut at one time. Work your way through the neck block. That way when you look on the inside, things will appear a lot more finished. Uh, it's not hard. But now I think we're going to be good. And here's what I also like about these. They have a very nice wide neck, or a nice little wide head. So that will cover on the neck block nicely. And uh, gives a pretty nice appearance. And we can see we're bottomed in there nice. So, that one's good. And I can adjust this one now and make sure everything's fitting nicely. So that looks good. I will actually put them in now and torque them down tight. This is just like doing the dovetail video. Uh, we want to set things in, make sure everything's working, and you don't know until you actually make the joint work. The next situation that he has it's this same setup. Uh, it's a different truss rod, but it's the same manufacturer. And it wasn't a manufacturer error. This probably would be any newbie mistake. You can see with the neck and the neck block and mechanics here, you have these two nuts that go in here. And you can see that there's not a heck of a lot of adjustment room. Uh, I would probably at this point. I would take it over and I have the luxury of having a milling machine and I would expand my slots enough of a gap there to replace the top. So if you take a look at how thick a top is and we're going to imagine this is the top, here's where you're going to want to be flush. So we know that right now this will bottom out and be dead flush. So you're going to want to have a little bit of adjustment and you want the adjustment this way so you elongate this slot a little bit. Now, what do I put and where do I put it? With this being flush, and if you can elongate the slots enough to give yourself approximately about an eighth of an inch movement, I would do my side set, put it in the mold, do my driving the bus, use the luthier discs, get my side shape, put my neck block in, and I would probably put this neck block in just about dead to the side. You're going to be truing up your uh, kerfing and the side set because we're just doing the rough in when we do the, the initial bussing, the additional disc work. Now the geometry is going to grind this down a little bit. So by giving yourself about an eighth of an inch movement here with what you have to take out to true it to the body shape, this should probably fall in pretty close that you can hit that right on the money. So what I had to do is go in here and kind of elongate the holes with this, which can be a little hairy to do if you've never done it before, 
but it's not that big of a deal. So just want to take a look at that before you start putting your body together and give yourself a little bit of eyeball room. Take a look at something and if it raises questions to you, then sit back and study it some more because you never know. So now I'm going to take my Allen wrench and I'm going to tighten this neck block and you can see the screws pulling my, my neck into the body. Tighten the other one up. And what I'm going to look for at this point now is going to be two things, especially my geometry. I want to see what my neck looks like. And the neck actually does not look too bad. I can see where uh, Glenn may have rounded an edge here doing some sanding. But I'm going to scribe the neck in here. And actually, there's a little bit of a radius here. We're going to flatten this area out. I can take my fingerboard, put the fingerboard on here, and we have a 14 fret to the body. We have a few extra frets on here that we can remove. I can put my bridge in the approximate location. Uh, we'll check the scale length here. Our scale length is. 20, 24.9, short scale. So this is about where my bridge is going to be. Now in the perfect world, I'm going to lay this on there and it's just going to miss the bridge. Well you can see, we're actually up a little bit. So this neck angle may be off a touch. So I can verify that by putting my straight edge on here. And sure enough, on my side here, you can see where, uh, let me see, do I have something small? You can see I'm not flush. Alright, so the neck is sitting a touch too far back. So we're going to have to take the neck and just roll it this way. And it's not really going to have to be much. We're very, very close. Now, what is our center line like? Well. This ain't my guitar, so I can put pencil marks on. I'm going to put my, my fingerboard on my neck. There's no registry pins on, on this neck, which is not that big of a deal. Uh, I will show you how to put a registry on here. Just take two pieces of tape. And I can tape it on the neck. And this will get us into the ballpark. Now we have room on this neck for some sanding, but holding the tape on here like this will give me a reasonably good idea where I'm at. So if I go along the fingerboard, and I mark down here, and I go along this fingerboard tape on this side, and I mark down here, you can see it's actually not too bad. One and five eighths on one side, and one and three eighths on the other. So we have to do two things with this neck. We have to twist it this way and we have to rock it forward. Now with that being said, let's go for the angle first. So I'm going to take this off and in order to get a good neck angle on here, we can do one of two things. My favorite method is to mark just evenly along the side of the neck. And I'll try to put three or four marks on. So you can see I have three marks on this side and I have three marks on this side. They're here just to give me an idea of where and how I can, can work. I don't like to try to guess. This helps eliminate some guesswork. The heel is nice and tight down here. The neck joint itself does not look too bad. So before I adjust the neck itself, I want to flatten the joint, the mating surface of the neck and the neck block area. So I'm going to go in here. I'm taking the two neck bolts out. And 
And like I said, I do know that we have to swing this thing counterclockwise, and it's not much. Okay. Now, I had put a pencil mark on here. And the reason why I put that pencil mark on there is I want to check to see how flat this area is. And I can see by looking into the sunshine, it's not flat. There is a slight radius on that neckcloth. So what do you do? Well, if I was here by myself, I'd probably go over to my favorite little belt sander and just whack on it. But in this case, I just have a little sanding block. I want to flatten everything out. And there's a nice high spot here. That might have even been what was throwing the neck. I have what's called PSA sandpaper. It's on a roll. It has a sticky back to it. And I can tell you that they make wonderful sanding blocks. You can use them for, for so many things. I get my sandpaper from Industrial Abrasives out of Reading. They do have a website. Uh, it's not necessarily that I'm plugging them. They don't give me any money. I do find that their product is very handy and they're great people to deal with. So now I have a nice wide sanding block. And while I roughed it off with this little short one, this can create some problems because it's not I'm, I don't have a large surface contact area. Here I do. So now, concentrating on keeping my weight over the actual mortise of the neck block, I'm going to sand until you can still see some pencil mark, but you can see how I'm flattening this area now. So that is what I want to do. I just want to flatten this area. And there was a little bit of glue hanging here that could have possibly been affecting how the neck sat. And this is part of the fit and finish. Almost. Okay, I have a little bit of pencil mark down here. And I think I can live with that. Now you can see I'm flat. And I haven't over flattened the area so that it looks weird. So I have a nice little flat. I can actually see light probably a quarter of an inch away from where the neck area is. So when I put this neck back in here, I actually think I have a much cuter fit. So now we're going to tighten the bolts up again and we're going to see just what that did. Um, not everything. I'm going to see, do I have enough plate on there? Yeah. So I want, want to see if I'm being held off anywhere else if I have to make some more depth adjustment, but I think at this point we're going to be pretty darn close. Now I don't really need to put the two of them in, but I prefer. I want to know what the joint looks like, the actual working joint. Uh, same way with the dovetail. Every time that I clamp it in the dovetail video, what I'm basically doing is what the screws are doing. I'm basically locking it down. You don't know what you have if you don't. Everything else is going to be a guess. Now the next thing I'm going to be doing after I have this tightened down, which I do, we can take a look at the joint, and I mean the joint looks very pristine. Uh, before I said it looked a little open, now can you just see how tight that is? I mean that joint is tight, that's snug. Right against the body, it's clean, both sides. And since this was an open side, I'd be willing to bet you, we now 
are probably going to be pretty much dead on center. Now granted with taping this on like this it may not be the most accurate way but this will get us into the ballpark. Uh, there's going to be a final setting process after this comes back from the finish anyway. But at least this way you know that if you can put it on here and you're hitting the center line down there it's going to be pretty good. And I'll show you how to do some registry in a minute. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, fortunately, there's a center mark on this bridge, or on the fingerboard from when he drilled holes. And he's off that way, maybe a healthy eighth. Yep. So we still need to make some adjustments. So, there's a number of ways we can do registry. And by registry, I mean locking this thing down so it doesn't move. One of the easiest ways is, before you do your inlays, like down here, don't inlay them. Drill a small hole through there. Uh, little brad nails work great. Drop them down in there, and away you go. So, how can we register this? Well, the first thing we know, we're going to set, we want to check our neck angle again, which I can do this way now and we'll be able to see definitely you're going to have to roll that forward. If I put this on here and I put my bridge down here, I want my bridge to be touching. We don't have the frets on so I want my bridge to touch. So you can see we have a, a ways to roll forward. So that's going to be the next thing we're going to do and I can put registry marks in at the same time. So we get to take this out. Alrighty, another thing that I want to do at this point uh, here, when you look right here at the corner, we have a very sharp corner. And by that I mean we have this is representing this joint here, and I have a neck that wants to come in down onto here. Well, this corner in here is probably not although it looks like it's perfectly cleared there is still some material there that this can hold things off. So you want to take this and you want to bevel that corner ever so slightly. And I don't recommend if your chisel is not shavable it's not sharp. I can't stress that enough. And you want to be careful that you don't have any meat exposed. And by that I mean work if this slips that it would catch you. And it doesn't have to be real pretty. It's just that we got to get this opened up so that no corner will hinder mating. So now we've relieved it. We've got a little bit of adjustability in the slot. What I want to do now is I want to make some registry marks so that I can take this fingerboard on and off at the same spot every time. So, I'm going to take this as it is. I'm going to take two pieces of tape. You can also use a clamp. I don't, <coughs> I don't care what you use. So I'm going to secure the fingerboard <coughs> onto this neck. <coughs> Alright, that's good. Now I need to make two holes and I'm going to use a sixteenth of an inch drill bit. With that drill bit, I'm going to use two brad nails and this is going to be our registration pins. That way you can take this off and on and put it back where it belongs. So, I want to make the pin holes invisible. A sixteenth of an inch is thinner than the fret wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole down here over the neck, right in the slot
and I'm going to come up here and the one thing you want to be careful of is you don't want to drill through the neck so now I have two pins now you don't want to drill down through the center because obviously we have the fretboard I have some brads and what I'm going to do just for the sake now is I can put these in here right like this so you can see they fit so I am good I can now take my tape off and as you see I now have registry marks so my fingerboard can come on and off this neck as often as I want to and I can put it back reasonably certain that it's back in the same point where I need it to be. Now you can put these little pins in and mount them at the last forever by taking the snippers I'll put that in here and I'll drop that in with some super glue and I'll do the same thing here So now you can see, I can take my pins and I can be pretty certain the position of this fingerboard to this neck. There we go. So now, I'm good to go. I'm going to leave these pins proud for now. Once the fingerboard is ready to be fretted, we can nip these off so that they're below the fret pens. But now you can see, I'm I'm not going to move. I'm at my 14th fret. I'm centered. I'm happy. So now that we got the locating problem solved, the next problem that we need is we got a heck of a lot of material here to remove. I don't need all of that material, so I'm going to. And this, I think, I did the same thing on the dovetail video going to take a little bit out of here, a little bit out of there, and I can take my chisel and I'm just going to hollow out a little bit. And if you notice, not once has my finger left my hand. I keep any body part out of the way of the chisel area. And I probably won't need to take much more than that. Now, the next step, we remember we needed to roll this forward. And I also need to roll it this way. So I can take a neck block, or a sanding block, and I have a number of them laying around here. And in order to get this to roll, I made these little registry marks. So I'm going to call this 0 to 1, 0 to 2, 0 to 3, etc. What I'm going to do, I'm going to mark this up with a pencil here. So my first rub is going to be right here. Okay, that's 0 to 1. Now I'm going to come down to 0 to 2. And you can see I'm just sanding and I'm just slowly going down the neck. Going to do the same thing over here. And I'm just working my way down the neck. 
Now it doesn't really take a heck of a lot off of here to make any kind of a big movement. And the reason is, when you're thinking about this amount of movement from here to here, your relationship's probably about six to one. So if I gotta move an eighth of an inch, one sixth of an eighth of an inch is about 30, 30 thousandths, which is really not a lot of material. So let's take a look and just see what that little bit of tweaking did. And that's a no-no. You should never lay a chisel on a piece of metal. So let's put this in and tighten up the screws. And this is a true bolt-on joint. With the two screws, you probably wouldn't need to glue them. Uh, for those of you that might be thinking or have a Martin bolt-on neck, their mortise and tendon neck is truly a glue joint. Uh, the screw is basically there to work as a clamp. I have seen a number of them fail over the years. Uh, so if you have one of them, be sure you put in enough glue. And usually the failure doesn't come because it's a bad design. It usually comes because of shock. All right. So let's see if we got any kind of movement here. And I think we got a little, although we didn't get a lot. So let's put this on. Twenty-four nines, approximately there. And what I'm looking for is I am looking for to make this down here. So nope, we don't have enough. You can see here that there's a considerable gap at this end compared to here. So I'm going to roll this some more. And we'll probably have to do that a couple of times. The one thing I did want to check is I did want to check center line. Let's see where we are with that real quick. Okay, well we haven't moved at any center line. So we're going to concentrate on angle and center line. And just like the dovetail, it's the same relationship, except now we aren't using the wedge, we're using the bolt to be the wedge. What we have to take off of here in order to swing it this way, and we have to take up the upper part of the neck in order to bring the headstock over. So, there is another method that you can use to help do this if you don't feel comfortable using a block. And it might be a little slower, but it does work, and that is where we're going to be doing what I call scribe sanding, and I'll show you that method. And that method just requires some 120 grit sandpaper, and you're going to cut it in little ribbons. So you take 120 grit, We can cut ourselves a number of strips. And what we do, since I want to scoot this whole thing over, you drop that right into the neck joint, hold this down with your fingers, and pull. Now I'm going to pull to the back because he has to trim here. Uh, since he has to trim here, if I pull up or down and round that edge over, it's not going to be a big problem. And I'm just going to sit here thinking about the way I want to move my neck. And since I want to move this forward, I can actually kind of hold my neck a little bit cockeyed, pull that through. Alright, you can see I'm pulling out a little cockeyed, holding that through. And this happens to be the way I want to roll it to catch my center line also. And have yourself a pile of these as they get dull and clogged up.
And I'm just thinking in my head how I want to throw this net. Now what I'll do, instead of using the zero to one method with the block, I'm going to hold my paper at an angle. That way when I pull it through, I'm just working that upper part of the neck. So you can get a better view of this. Okay, I'm like up to zero to one. Zero to two. And then down to zero to three. And I'll do that a little bit more, one more time. Up here, zero to one. Zero to two. Zero to three. And then I'll do the whole thing. Now I'm going to tighten that up again. And we're going to see what kind of movement we got out of the deal. And you're better off taking a bunch of little movements until you really understand how the neck joint works than trying to do it all at one time. Uh, I personally would probably be using a chisel. Uh, however, since you're a beginner, this is probably a much safer way for you to do this. Uh, like I said, so many people have chisels and they really don't know how to sharpen them. So if you do know how to sharpen a chisel and use it, by all means go right ahead. Uh, it's the same thing, uh, but just here, for those who are new to the hobby and are just starting to learn, this is a very safe way to do something and the sandpaper very controllable. So now, you can see that neck joint is nice and tight. Very good on both sides. There we go. Now let's see, did it move? I might have got the 30 second of an inch over. And I'm happy if I can get if I can get to within an eighth of an inch of center, and we basically are at this point, I wouldn't be too worried, but we can kind of tweak this a little bit more. I can tell by here we aren't there yet. So I can put this back on here. We want to go to about 25. And you can see we're down to about a sixteenth of an inch. So we brought it about halfway. We're going to do it some more. And we'll see that we can't get this to drop in on the next bit or two. Okay. Just to recap what we have to do. Because we had to tilt the neck forward, I used these little reference marks and I could roll it forward. I needed to get it to tilt this way, so I took more off of this. <clears throat> the last thing I want to do now is I just made some adjustments. I'm going to put this on. I'm not going, I'm just hand tightening these because I want to do what I call scribe sanding. And by scribe sanding is I want to make sure that the neck where it joins the sides is reasonably in the same plane as the side set. Uh, so we're going to, they call that scribing, so that's why I call it scribe sanding. And this is real simple. I'm just going to give myself enough room to get paper in there. Now, if you look, the joint looks pretty good, but I have a little bit of opening. This side is nice and tight. And you can see that that's reasonably snug. This side, I have a little bit of opening down here at the heel and across. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back off the screws enough. 
thank God for ball and screw for Allen Rangers. Now, this happens to be 120 grit. You can use 120 or 220. Just lay that in against here. Gently pull it. And we're going to do the same thing on this side because I don't want to move the neck. I just want to scribe this in. So what I got to do on one side, it's like algebra. If you do to one side, you got to do to the other. I'm going to pull this way. And you can tell I, I have, I'm not perfectly planed out. I got points where it's grabbing more than others. You know when you get a good a good joint, this will just get nice and smooth when you pull. One side then the other. There's getting the sharp ends off. Alright. There it's going. Now, that's good and pretty good. Oh yeah. oh yeah. We're just about done. Okay. Now, just those few little rubs cleaned up any of the rough edges. Now, granted, there's going to be finish going on this. I'm snugging it down just as this, if this was going to be the real thing. Now, you can see that joint is about as perfect as you can get. The other side, there's just a little bit down here, and I'm not even going to worry about that at this point because we do have finish that has to be applied, and we'll worry about the final at that point. I can now put my Pin back on the bridge. It's a 24 9 scale, so I'm going to set this right about where that would be about 25. I can now put my straight edge on here, and you can see the bridge is not coming off. So we're perfect. We're right on the bridge. He's going to be putting frets on, which will come up about a sixteenth of an inch. That's not a big deal. Our center line, following this, here's our center line, and we're looking just about dead inch and a half. This side, from there to there, dead inch and a half. So now we have a perfect neck. The angle's right, everything is nice and clean. What's very important when you look at this, because of the Bending video number three, setting the geometry up on the sides. That created that one and a half degree neck angle right here. So we have, you can take a look, there's no light, very, very little light coming through the bottom of the fingerboard. I can take, this is probably 10, 11 thousandths, and that is actually being held in there. So when this gets glued up, this fingerboard's gonna be straight. His action will probably fall off at about 565 thousandths on top of the, the bridge and saddle. I'd like to see a half of an inch, but the thing that is in a couple of weeks when this stretches out, they'll have to make a readjustment. But that's it. He's good to go. And that is how you adjust a mortise and tenon. Again, the same similarities as, as a dovetail. One way or the other, got to remove the cheeks. First, you want to get your angle. Second, you want to get your, your center line. And that's it. So I hope you've learned a little something from me. And if not, let me know what I missed. I'll be happy to learn something from you. Again, thanks from Loose Creek Guitars. And uh, I hope you'll see this guitar in the finish in a couple of videos. Bye.